Mm. The Frainier property. Yes. Let's hear about it. Um, Vicki and I have met with Community Mental Health, and this item is basically brought to you because there's a lot of um, discussion about the Lafreniere property lately, and Community Mental Health um, discussed the opportunity to work with the county to build a new facility on the Lafreniere property. At the same time, the county was talking, has talked about a jail at the site. Originally, when we bought this property, that was the original thought, is that a new jail would be built at the Lafrenia property. We've discussed a jail um, 12 years, 13 years, 17 years. It's been located in downtown Trevor City for quite some time. We know it's needed upgrades. And last week, the county board talked about a medical examiner and the possibility of having a morgue. And having a morgue on a county property is certainly an opportunity as well. So we wanted to bring this before you to look at possibilities and talk about discussion items on what needs to be out at the Lafrenia property, the timing of such, what partners should we be bringing to the table for this discussion, as well as I put the policy, we put the policy in there for property purchase. There's no opportunities to work government to government on if there's some synergies to work with community mental health and the health department to, to sell property to another governmental unit, we couldn't do that without going out for an RFP. So is there an opportunity to really look at that policy and look at a waiver if there's an opportunity to serve clients better for county um, services from our health department and the community mental health? Yes. Um, before you get too far into yeah. this, I'm, I'm looking at the attachments um, A and B to the packet. Mm -hmm. Yes. And and because I'm ignorant, I have no idea what these really mean. So under attachment A, for example, mm -hmm. um, can you give us an idea of what we've got <coughs> left that's developable or? Let me go up here. That'd and be I great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So this is attachment A that's in your packet. <laughs> yes. And if you, this is basically attachment A and attachment B if you put it as an overlay. Oh, okay. Um, so this right here, in 2012 when we built the health department, the, pub, the health department that is this building, the green roof building. Yeah, um, I recognize that. Okay. <laughs> um, we looked to see what would be left to be able to be built at the site. And this is, would be a proposed jail that could fit, um, I have, I don't have. 300 don't have beds. 300 beds, 145,000 square feet of space in this building. Okay. Then in the back here is another um, building that we could have. And right here is an extension, a, a possible expansion of the health department. And this here is a multi-story building that could be on this site as well it's with the setbacks. And then the retention basins here would be just retention basins and parking. What's the building in the very back that you pointed to? What's the, what's the square footage on that? I mean, I see a lot of space surrounding it. Could there be a bigger building there or is that size? It could size? be a bigger building. Okay, so yeah. you just kind of Wait. plunked the size down there. If I recall correctly, when this site plan was developed, uh -huh. you know, we tried to incorporate a you know 300 bed jail law enforcement center. Sure. Uh, I believe the idea for the facility, the room in the back or the building in the back, was a county facilities building. Uh -huh. Because as, as you may recall, our current facilities building is at the civic center. Yep. Very very small. Yep. And we have equipment and materials stored and. God knows how many places throughout the county. So where I'm seeing green space, Jean, mm -hmm. to your left there, all that? Right here? Yep. Yeah, is that is that um, dedicated green space or can that be developed as well? It can be developed as well, um, but... I know there's an apartment complex there. Yes, there's single family residential. Uh -huh. It's a lot of residential. So yeah. one of the pieces that we want to be cognizant of is siting a jail 
we have to ensure that we're going to reach out to the neighborhoods and that there's a buffer. I mean, there's not a buffer now, but we kind of like the buffer part of that when we Whether push. it needs to be all of that or not, I think that's open for discussion. But you can develop. That's, a, that's the it, county's property. Is there another site that you all looked at for a jail? Have we looked at other sites? Yeah. Sure. Have we? But, but we really never found anything that fit. We, uh, we looked at five sites when we did the Woodmere facility for the sheriff. It wasn't five sites, Tom, that we looked at for that. And we ended up with the Woodmere site because the, the site that the county chose, the city turned down. And uh, we ended up, you know, the very next night I made a motion that we just build the jail and the law enforcement center at Lafrenia where we already owned the property. <coughs> and I was asked to withdraw the motion and to cool my judge just a little bit. There, you know. Well, I, Gene, later, I'm only asking this question cool, because we, we haven't attend. we haven't dedicated anything there, right? This these are con these are concepts. These are concepts, okay. but and the concept mm -hmm. for the jail, I mean, that was one of the reasons we bought the Lafreniere. But as we're talking on the visionary and where does the county want to go, we know we have uh, growing pains, and community mental health as a partner for us kind of brought this to us and at the time there's nothing we can do about that so we want to bring it to you and when we talked to Wendy about this and Carl I have Carl from Community Mental Health and Wendy from uh, our health director there's some synergies and some opportunities but before we talk about that what are those opportunities for the clients and is there space on this site for community mental health so that's what we want to talk to you about tonight is one learn about what those client services are between health department and cmh and how do we move forward with really doing the due diligence and do you believe that there is enough due diligence to form subcommittees that Vicki and I can come back to administration, bring to you in January some opportunities for a subcommittee, what partners need to be at the table, and a timeline on getting this together. Dan and then Bob. Um, back, I think it was in, was it in 14, that we went to jail school? I think it was. Uh, anyway, uh, <coughs> uh, I don't remember much of it. I remember it was a very complex planning situation and, and requires a, a, a professional to guide you through it. And uh, sometimes you think you've got a piece of land that's just right for the jail, and guess what? It's not. Um, but I do think, I don't know how to put this in a, in a non offensive way, I don't mean to be offensive, uh, but I think on this land or any land we're going to develop, I think the the uh, piece that needs to take precedence is the jail. Uh, it's not offensive. That's why we're here today. Is yeah. to say, I, I don't want. I don't want to put a, a community mental health portion on that property. Now, now I'll not be able to build our jail. I think the jail comes first. To gotcha. me, that's just gotcha. that's just me. Yeah. Whether we build it first or not, it's a different thing. But. To know that we're going to build it needs to come before we allow them to. And that to requires them. significant planning. Yes. And uh, so before we commit to community mental health, we got to know we can build a jail there. Do we have a space? Yeah. And then can we? how do we fund it and all that stuff? I, I think we need a new jail. Uh, but I think it should be the captain of the team on, on this piece of land. That's just my feelings. Bob? It, who would pay for the community mental health building if it was built? Would that be the county that paid for that, or is that no. the CMA? community mental health? Okay. I mean, I, that, that was going to be my line too. Is we really need? I mean, I don't borrow time. I think with the jail, um, you know, I, I don't know if we can financially afford right now to build one, but it would be nice to start looking at numbers and, and stuff. Um, so, so if they were to build. A, and I know that you're at your early days. You're just looking for interest to, to right. move forward on this. But if they were to build um, at their expense a building on our property, what would be the ownership? Of the CMH building? Yeah. 
CMH we, would own that building. They'd own the building, but we'd own the land that it sits on. Or, or they would buy the land from the county. Would it be taxable? No. No. Yeah, community mental taxable. health is a and, governmental. And would we sell it at fair market value? Typically, that's how you, yes. Okay. Do we know what the value is? Do we have any idea what the fair market value of the parcel would be? Are, are you talking the parcel that's fronting? Um, yeah, the one up in the corner there. Yep. That great big piece. I mean, that's bigger than the health department. Right? Looks like it's bigger than no. the green roofed building. I think you could, um, I mean, this was just a schematic. I mean, you can put it this way. Oh, I don't care which way you put it. I'm it saying I'm tall. looking at the square do footage. We, it looks we, like it's bigger than the other two buildings. Do we remember what buildings. the square footage of it the health department big. is? Wendy, do you know Maybe the square footage of yours? Oh, shit. Um, this building is 38,000 square feet. That building is 38,000 square feet. Wow. How big is the health department? I'm sorry, I don't have Wendy, that do you know? And community right. mental health right. says that they need 56,000, so it would have oh. to be taller. How big is, it? is the... Taller or situated differently on the property. Okay. Yes, Dan. I should read my hand rather than pour yeah. it out. Yeah, uh, the current community mental health building, uh, how many square feet is it? According it is. to the notes, 41,500. And they need something bigger they than that? They need 50% more than that, or nearly 50% more than that. Okay. Just out of curiosity, you know, do we have any use for the current to 60, community you know, mental health building? That would they be discussed okay. at, you know, if, if we're interested in that. Whether there be any use for us do, in having that building. Oh, because we don't own that building. I understand that, but okay. we're looking at a real estate transaction. I'm wondering if a trade might be a, of any use to us. I'm just throwing it out there. Are you talking about the existing That's CMH correct. Building? Yes. It's over there by Veda. Yeah, I know. The old Red Mill property. You Go ahead. that toxic site over there? Um, <laughs> you know, I... We, we talked about citing a jail here 2002, 2003, so it's been a while. At that time, you know, we, we had the experts look at that site, and it was deemed to be a very good opportunity for us. Uh, you know, one thing that we got into a discussion is uh, we talked about a law enforcement center. The sheriff is still required constitutionally to maintain an office within the city, within the county seat. So the sheriff would still have to retain an office within the city. This well, that's not, just like the county I, clerk. And I'm you just, said, you know, I, I'm all just, they have to I'm do just is saying have that, a, a that got to be a big, long discussion with some people at the time was that the sheriff had to be in the county seat. You know, would that's we? That's statutory? If we, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we read the, if you read the articles in the ticker this morning, uh, some of the comments had to do with the fact that the jail has to be next to the courthouse. Well, it doesn't have to be no. because it's no. all throughout the country. There are jails that are completely separate from the courthouse. Uh, one of the things that I had talked a little bit about with some people not that long ago was when Pugsley mm -hmm. closed, whether or not there would be any use for the county to use Pugsley. Uh, it's a long ways from town. You know, the transportation costs are going to become very, very high. You know, I think if we were had been in a, had the opportunity to talk about a joint jail with Wexford County uh, that may have worked, but Wexford, as we all know, has has constructed their new jail and, and it's really patents. nice. I was just there today. Uh, <laughs> but you know, regional jails are always a real fun thing to talk about. Go from one side of this country to the other, and you won't find three of them that work. It just never happens. You know, it's it's easy for people that don't understand the process things to talk about regional jails but they just simply never work Dan and then Cheryl I was hoping tonight that we'd have a chance uh, to ask the sheriff or Captain Ritter to maybe speak about the jail and what his expectations and hopes might be okay who wants to go first the sheriff or Captain Ritter they're pointing at each other <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, uh, Tom Bensley, Grand Traverse County Sheriff. So uh, a couple comments uh, first uh, on the property. Um, I would encourage you to look out for the county's best interests first um, and consider all possible uses for that property for the county. Um, I have no idea where the 
uh, square footage calculation came from a new jail. Um, there are, we have several concerns. Do they include uh, facilities for um, uh, 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 parking and storage, um, a recreational vehicle building to, to move there or, or all that equipment? So uh, a little concerned about the <clears throat> the square footage. I don't if it's just office spaces, we need more than that. Um, number two, um, I know the buffer would be a concern. Um, the the CMH building on that property, uh, if they need to be close to the health department, there's vacant property to the south of that. Um, I know it's been on the market. I was by there today. I didn't see the signs there. Maybe the listing's expired. Maybe the property is sold. But I would encourage you to make sure that all the county's needs are taken care of first. Maybe the Commission on Aging goes up there. Maybe there's a facility for their, their trucks and their garage and their housing. Um, those sorts of things. Um, before you start <coughs> selling property or letting somebody else use it. Um, this property could be built out um, very soon. And where are you 20 years from now or 30 years from now? Um, you're built out. You're going to have to start going someplace else. So the concept of having this this building could be there. These offices could be there also. So um, I think you need to reevaluate the plan because there are, are several options. As far as the jail and sheriff's office are concerned, um, our biggest concern would be we need to be together. We have three separate buildings uh, right now. Um, it's uh, very difficult to operate out of two different buildings. Um, we don't, at the law enforcement center, uh, we don't see um, any of the staff at the jail. Uh, we have to make an effort to go there. We don't see the officers. There's that camaraderie between the patrol officers and the corrections officers. They don't see each other um, in casual settings, in the locker room and changing. Um, it's hard to know the people, especially with the amount of turnover that we've had. Um, I, I'm embarrassed to say that I probably wouldn't recognize a lot of the corrections officers if I saw them in Myers, just because there's not that connection there. It's hard to do business that way. Um, uh, I don't get a chance to sit down and just BS with Captain Ritter about what's going on. It's a phone call. It's very impersonal. So being in the same spot um, is very, very important to us. Along with that, we're with the city police now. Commissioner Wheelock uh, indicated um, in trying to locate a, a co-office um, building with the city police, they, they, they won't leave the city. So that will be a split. If we leave town, that will be a split. Um, um, it's worked very well. Uh, maybe it's time to cut ties and maybe we're both big enough now we can operate uh, independently. It has its advantages, yes, absolutely. There are some drawbacks being in the same building with somebody. Yeah, we have our squabbles over space and square footage and, you know, what are you doing putting this stuff? You know, it's half our room, half. So there are those squabbles. So that would go away. Um, they will not move out color frame, I'm sure. Uh, I think the closest spot years ago was a new administrative building um, just south of Boone Street on the vacant property um, west of, of Wigan. <laughs> and it was a couple hundred yards outside of the city, and, and that was no. As I recall, I had no part in those discussions at that time. So um, that split um, will occur. Uh, as far as cost for a facility, we've done some fairly generalized costs um, and it just depends on the construction, the construction cost and what do you want in the building, what do you want the offices to look like and what are the, what's the makeup of uh, other areas outside of the, uh, the jail building, like a fenced-in storage area, an impound lot, uh, a space to uh, store uh, the vehicles we have. In 2000, mm -hmm. 10, 11, uh, we built a recreational vehicle building. <laughs> We're out of that. That's, that's, it's full. It's full. Um, it's not big enough. So um, 
even 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 by putting things outside in the fencing area, it's been great. Um, looking down the road, maybe that's a new commission on aging facility. Maybe that's a new maintenance facility. I, I don't know, but that's um, property that that we own, um, that the county owns. If that is sold, if we move out of that, the money gained from that has to be <clears throat> put back into uh, a law enforcement use. Um, it can't just go back into the general fund. So we'd have to, quote, repurpose that money, and I'm sure that um, a, a new building uh, w w would be possible. We'd have to look at that. But because of that with seizure money, there are certain rules that we have to follow. So those are some of our concerns. Uh, we'd really need to sit down and say, this is what a new modern facility would look like, and what about 20 years from now? Is that going to be big enough 20 years from now? And if it's not, we can't go anyplace. So, um, <clears throat> I have a question I'm, for the sheriff. Please. Sure. Go ahead. I, I, is, uh, is Pugsley in Grand Traverse County? I'm sorry? Is Pugsley in Grand Traverse County? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and have you, can you give us an idea of um, how the judges feel about uh, arraignments and other type of hearings uh, via polycom as, op uh, as opposed to having uh, the criminals brought into court? Right. Um, I think they're very receptive to that. Okay. Um, technology's Technology has been changing and changing. Um, Captain Ritter can speak to that. Um, I can tell you that, um, uh, as far as transportation, if this, if if the facility moves from where it is now, um, what is what happens when uh, inmates need to go to court? Um, in the uh, uh, in the uh, Hall of Justice, there are three detention rooms, uh, which we can't use. They were built for detention rooms. And we can't use them because if you have somebody in this room and somebody in this room and somebody in this room, you need a, a corrections officer watching these people, these people, and these people. That's three corrections officers. Uh, <clears throat> in talking with Captain Ritter earlier today, the security electronics upgrade for uh, the jail um, uh, that is process is is is, is starting. Um, we will be able to um, put security cameras in those rooms. We're not sure on the cost, but security cameras, because now the cameras that we're able, with the upgrade, we can use uh, IP systems, and so we don't need the hard wires going back and forth. So the judges are um, uh, using that. Uh, Captain Ritter can speak to that. Uh, it's been suggested that there, if there's a, a, a jail facility off-site, that there could be a, a courtroom there where the judges would go to the inmates. Well, I'm a little hesitant on um, saying, yeah, they'd be willing to. I think the mountain comes leave to Mohammed. on a day like yeah. today yeah. and go yeah. up and hold court yeah. for a couple hours and then go back to their chamber. But, but so, the point, the point but, is, the point is that that if there is a possibility of Pugsley being even considered. I, th I think we are, would be prudent to look at it. It is uh, an existing jail. I mean, it is an existing uh, medium, I think. Was it low security or medium security? Low, low, uh, level one, I believe. Le level high one security, yep. prison. Um, so it already has a lot of systems in place. Um, I know from, I mean, I just conducted a, a two-day trial in Wexford today, and the, the, uh, the respondent was uh, in prison uh, at Kinross. So I, I mean, he was right. He was right there. He just wasn't right there. Uh, so um, you know, if if technology is something that we could utilize, maybe Pugsley becomes more viable. Yeah, I well, think uh, one of the one the of the issues is that 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 wouldn't be a, a turnkey operation for us. Mm -hmm. In that um, that facility mm -hmm. was designed and built differently. Than a new modern uh, jail would be built, but, but so, the but the cost but the cost to upgrade it may be significantly yes. less than the cost of starting from ground zero on at Lafreniere. Yes. I'm just saying I think it would be fiscally responsible of us to at least explore it. I mean, if it, I understand the state owns it, they're not using it. <laughs> so I just want to throw that out there because sure. I think we're brainstorming tonight. So yes, we are, Tom. Yeah, on the Pugsley thing, it'd be nice to be able to. From my point of view, to be able to tell the public, you know, why we would or why we wouldn't, and not, you know, ignore it as as a possibility because it's because they know it's there. Um, 
so you know to have good reasons as to uh, to like it or not to not like it in other words but what do you uh, think about uh, jail size what's your opinion on that compared to the one you have now is 300 beds uh, I, we haven't spent any time uh, looking at that um, uh, depends you know I don't think the population of this area is going to be going down mm -hmm. and when the population goes up our job gets busier uh, more people more crime so how many beds now <clears throat> I'm sorry how many beds now uh, that we can have uh, 168 but effectively we can use 162 um, however uh, to be operating um, um, efficiently to be able to move people around and classify them separate and segregate them we should be at 85 percent of our rated capacity which means that we should have about 142 I believe and a half inmates in jail more than that it um, becomes uh, burdensome <clears throat> is, is there anything else that's missing any other types of uh, facilities that are associated with the jail that's missing in the current one uh, judge Stanton has um, uh, would be um, she's made comments before she would be on board for a juvenile detention facility here mm -hmm. would that be part of this uh, I don't know um, yeah that actually brings has, up something she has, else huh? she's made those comments yeah. that she would love to have a facility in town uh, for juvenile detention uh, that's a whole other topic yeah that I went to yes. uh, the volunteer meeting last night the uh, recognition for people who help out with Probate uh, court volunteer. yeah mm -hmm. awesome. yeah so the youngest person that's gone to, to Roscommon might have been nine which is kind of startling uh, but most of them are 13 to 16 and then the law is going to change to include 17 are, are we uh, well, um, they're they're looking at that whole uh, system, um, so that could make a big difference. Um, I don't know how many uh, so that's seventeen not, year olds we, no. we have. I mean, they no. may come in, but they may not be <laughs> sentenced mm -hmm. um, to stay there. So, um, question: It's uh, uh, it's three hundred would seems like a like a lot, but thirty years from now, is that going to be enough? And if it's not, do you, can, is there a provision made to just expand that? Um, the other thing is, um, um, I like to use this reference, the jail, the old jail, the first jail, the new jail, um, was built in 1964. And in 1964, they went, the way they built jails was a linear jail, a long hallway with cells on each side. That's the way they built them. That's what they have over there. When they expanded that in 1984, 20 years later, they don't build, build linear jails anymore. No, we, got, we don't do that anymore. It's a podular design. So at the west end, there are two large pods that have, I believe, uh, 16 uh, cells in each pod. Different way to do jails. 20 years later in 2004, they added on. So you can see, um, what I'm trying to say is 300 enough? Well, in 1964 this was enough, 20 years later it's not, and 20 years later it's not again. <clears throat> they don't build linear jails, they don't build podular jails, <laughs> direct or indirect supervision. So that's the 2004 edition. So in 20 years, these three designs, they may have some other way of, of, of constructing uh, uh, jail. So um, there's three different designs under one roof, which most of you know is just awful conditions to operate out of. So when I say, you know, is 300 enough? I don't know. Cheryl? Um, so I know that when Munson built, uh, did their addition, uh, the emergency room and the heart wing, they built it in such a way that they could go up. Mm -hmm. So it was built intentionally for expansion. Right. Presumably, we would have um, smart architects who could help us design in such a way that we could go up or, you know, presumably we could go out. Have you been to the new Wexford facility, which is no. a 300 bed jail? It no, is a, it's not 300. I it's was just. 158 plus 6 plus 2, I believe. Okay, well, I would, uh, whatever. Um, no, I haven't. I, I but would I've been to I the would, Leelnau County Jail, which was built 
Ten years ago. Ten years ago. Right. Very envious. I res resisted going up there because I knew what our facility was, how we operated. Yep. And uh, it's not uh, opulent. I mean, it's very basic, um, a very basic construction. Uh, they have room for expansion of their offices inside. Uh, they have plenty of room to add space uh, inside, uh, which works very well. Well, I guess my point was that we have a, a number of opportunities regionally where we can have a field trip. We don't have to go to Colorado yes. for jail school. We can, we can visit Wexford, we can visit Leelanau. I think Benzie is in the process of building a new facility. Um, and I would propose that we do that. I mean, I don't think tonight we were going to resolve the issue mm -hmm. of jail. We were really talking about land. Mm -hmm. And, and so my, my sense is that what the sheriff has pointed out to us for consideration is do we want to make sure we have enough land for our own use before we start selling it? And so I think that's the point that he made. Um, have any or all of the commissioners toured our own jail? Yes. I have. I have. Yes. What did you say? Not, not as, not, not as a... Has, have all of us <laughs> toured <laughs> as an outsider yeah. the yeah. jail? <laughs> there was that one incident. You have, have not. Have Ron has not. Sonny, you have, I'm sure. Okay. And but have I, you been in there, Dan? There's that 500 George? section when you're yeah. walking down the hallway, and I'm not sure whether the, your bar's on both sides. I'm never sure whether I'm on the inside or the outside. <laughs> <laughs> that bothers me a little bit. Uh -huh. but. I know when I was on that tour, uh, you wondered if you're going to get locked in there forever because it's just I, like a, a Escher. Horrible. Nervous. Bar, that's you know? horrible. Yeah. yeah, that's horrible. I guess Very one much. of the things that I, I'd like to point out is, you know, in 2000, 2004, we had the Blue Ribbon Jail Committee that talked about the capacity, the projected capacity for Grand Traverse County. There were at that time, I believe, five methods by which it was projected that we used, you know, as outlined by the Department of Justice of how to anticipate how many beds we were going to need. All five methods came out between 290 and 320 beds. So the 300, out, 300 bed idea was was pretty much we were right where we needed to be. Right. I think the the biggest thing you know when we talk about our jail, you know, and we can you know, we can sit back and we can talk about the deficits, which there's a lot of them. But we need to remember that the the people that spend the time in, the, in our jail are our employees. And the working conditions in our current jail are simply not acceptable to ask people to do. You want to know why we have so much turnover <coughs> problem? You want to know why we have trouble maintaining corrections officers? It's because of the condition of the facility by which you're asking to work in every day. You know, it's, it's it's not just it's not just the type of people they have to work with. Because if this is your profession, you're understanding that those are the kinds of people you're going to work with. But the conditions that they are asked to work in every day are, you know, on the verge of being deplorable. Mm -hmm. Does uh, Dan, and then I'm going to see if Captain Ritter has anything to say. He's I nodding. I just want to so. stress. Yes. I know that the, the new the new way now is not to go to Colorado, to, but to bring the experts here. But from the very beginning, let's get an expert, and uh, let's deal with our our jailers, our uh, our sheriff, and our captain, and. The, and Right from the very beginning, uh, as we talk about and explore, I believe we need them on board. And, and we've done that. They've been here, yeah. you know, on but multiple the, occasions. Things have changed. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, they 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 sent a new guy here right now, and he can and he can help us avoid a lot of mistakes. Well, and we had David Bennett, for example, was here, and he told us we shouldn't have any of that. So we should be having alternative sentencing for everyone, and it was it was. It was. That wasn't helpful. If you want to have a real discussion, <laughs> ask Tom Power for his opinion of David Bennett. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> well, I, I, I just know that that's one of the things I came away with from jail school. And I, mm -hmm. and uh, if the sheriff or the captain wants to comment on that, I know that those type of people in the beginning are really important. Does Captain Ritter have some comments? Thank you. at this again and, and this is getting some traction I think where we left off in the process last time after the planning a new institution school was we were placed to start a needs assessment for Grand Traverse County 
that is hiring a consultant that comes in that looks at what we looked at through the pony program, what the studies were, and then part of that process is site selection. That's all in that needs assessment. And NIC has a, a list of people they recommend to do that. Um, but the pony program has changed. You no longer go to Aurora, Colorado for that program. They send the pony program here. That way as many stakeholders as possible can be involved in it locally. Um, so it may be a good idea to look at that and start from the pony program right at the beginning again and, and move forward. So we've done this twice already in the, well, la in the last 15 years. And, and, and let me just suggest that, you know, like I said, Wexford just built a facility. I mean, they just opened it. Um, Benzie is building a facility. Let's see if we can learn something from them with, before we go out and spend $50,000 to hire a consultant to come here. I mean, there, it, you've already done an awful lot of work. You've done a lot of work. And we're not, we're not looking for a site. We have a site. We're not, you know, we're not novices here. We just need to figure out how much do we need and then how are we going to pay for it? That's really what we need. Isn't that where we got stuck before? I think basically. I mean, yes. just to put a yep. fine point on it? Okay. Yep. That pretty much puts a pin in it. Okay. I hate to butt heads with you, but I think we are novices. Uh, one of the things I learned in that school is that uh, they showed us several incidences where people, not people, but boards went on their own thinking they knew what to do, and they ended up with nightmares. We need a pro, that's my, my opinion, right from the beginning. So. I'm not suggesting we don't need a pro. I'm saying that we should talk to people that are within our circle of influence who have just done this and find out what they, they did. I'm not okay? Against. That's all I'm saying. I'm, I'm not, not against say that. Okay. But, but once we've done that, we're still going to have to go through the pony program, mm -hmm. I think. And because uh, you can really mess this up. It's a $50 million building minimum. Well, that's a much bigger number than I was told. 33 to 35 is what I was told. Okay, saying. whatever. Um, but we got to do it right. Okay, so I'm watching body language. Nate, do you have anything to say? No, Okay, <laughs> just checking. <laughs> Bob and yeah, then Ron. I mean, you know, I'm all for the jail too, but we, we still need to, I know it's going to be a long process, but we got to wait and see what this new bill that the governor's going to sign for the pension reform mm -hmm. means to us. Mm -hmm. Because we fall directly into what I'm seeing as the realm where emergency managers, unless they accept our exception. Our, um, we should get the exception. So hopefully, there are exceptions I mean, for those who have made strides. But that also means that moving forward, yep. the boards are actively Mm -hmm. looking at that Absolutely. you know so mm -hmm. um, there hopefully is a way to to get all this together I mean uh, like I said we do need it but that I don't yeah. know what we can afford right mm -hmm. now so uh, I, I just want to repeat what the sheriff had said that we need to look out for our best interest when it comes to our properties mm -hmm. there um, this is a high dollar piece of property Pugsley not so um, there's a nice piece of property down around the corner on Keystone and such that uh, <laughs> community mental health could go on there if they could strike a deal with uh, Parks and Rec. Um, but, and it's not that far from the health department. You know, short baited bus drive there. Um, that's just my uh, two cents on it and I think we need to keep our property. After all, we paid $1.2 million for that piece of property that we have there. So. Okay. So, so you're good. Okay. Let's thank switch you. gears from jail sure, to morgue. You.